So uh, just circling back to some of these things, I mean, you, you touched on something about age. I mean, there's these cutoffs. Don't, don't get a PSA on somebody right. over the age of 72 or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, I see 80-year-old guys that, you know, can blow us off. You know, exactly. they're, they're, exactly. they're in great shape to exercise right. and right. things like that. And so I think that's where you have to individualize. And, you know, your, your colleagues sometimes criticize you. Why would you order a PSA on an 80-year-old guy? And I say, well, if the guy has Gleason 9 cancer, <clears throat> it's threatening to his life, and we, we do it. You know, I think that is so important, especially for primary care, because when we look at cutoffs, and, and some, we get these guidelines that we have to follow, and, and, and sometimes they make sense, but in a case like this, it makes absolutely no sense. We have to individualize that patient. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. absolutely do. And, and just as you said, if I have a 60-year-old COPD or just had a bilateral BKA and they're an insulin-dependent diabetic, I'm probably not going to get a PSA. All right? On the other hand, just as you said, I get the 80-year-old who's going to play tennis before he visits his dad. You know, there's a, there's a guy with good history. So, you know, medicine is still an, is still an art in a right. lot of ways. And we have to individualize the patient. And, 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 and when we put the guidelines that say don't screen or stop screening at this age, we're missing an opportunity to catch the patient that we can help. I mean, it's physiological age rather than chronological age. And there are always outliers that we have to worry about. And we have to ask our patients, how do they want to spend their lives? Just circling back to U.S. Services Preventive Task Force. When I give talks, I said they were right. And people go, what are you talking about? The, you know, the, the correction was needed. We were overdiagnosing mm -hmm. and overtreating Gleason sixes and that, and and you know the way forward with family practice is with this PSA cut off at one point five is you do the next generation of tests, which are you know urine tests and blood tests. There's four K and there's a select MDX to find aggressive cancers, and that's where you want to go. If we go forward uh, and talk a little bit about uh, about the the shared care, Dan, you said something about the guy in the bicycle lean yes, and then he didn't right. have it. You know, there's a, I think there's a lot of evidence about people really need to work on physical exercise Absolutely. and weightlifting Absolutely. and their, that, so forth and so on. And there's actually, it, there's a big trial going on uh, funded by uh, the Movember movement mm -hmm. about intense exercise and CRPC. I mean, what are your thoughts about that? We kind of let that go a lot. Well, I, I think that, that when you counsel a patient about going and on androgen blockade, you are obligated to talk to them about all the side effects, and that includes how do you prevent it. So clearly, uh, light weights, uh, 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 <clears throat> running, uh, trying to burn calories, those are important overall uh, to maintaining your weight. Because remember, for a man to lose a pound who has a normal hormonal axis, they have to burn 3,500 calories. It's 4,500 for a man on hormone therapy. So I think, I think that this is crucial because weight involves uh, effects on sugar metabolism and diabetes. That, of course, has an effect on the heart. That has an effect on blood pressure. So this all is tied together in that situation. Yeah, and, I, and I'd say, again, circling back to what this is all about, shared care. Um, you know, the urologist isn't always on top of that. You're not always That's on right. top of that. Yeah. You're not always on top of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, that all these pieces need to fit together. I mean, that uh, the metabolic syndrome that occurs, we, you know, again, we tend to, to ignore that. And, you know, what you just said is that, when, you know, when we started first using ADT, the, the survival rate was uh, 18, 22 months, and, and now people are going 10 years, you know, and, uh, and you know, we're saying maybe we're actually curing some of these people. You know, what you just said about the exercise is is so incredibly important and and actually it's I love to hear that I absolutely love to hear that because when patients come into my office and they're getting therapy for metastatic cancer I mean they, they it, it, they're they're depressed obviously they're unhappy with I just had a patient yesterday I was seeing and they're just depressed so what do they stop doing they stop taking care of themselves right. and right. and my guess and I'm going to start teaching on this just from what you just said is that I should be pushing my colleagues in primary care that more we we we've always said more exercise is better but for you to say in this condition it's even more important Absolutely. I mean that that is such a pivotal point you said in fact what I what they often say is I'm too tired to exercise and in fact, that using that energy to get yourself out and to do something actually helps with depression. It helps with weight control. 
And it just as long as they get over the hump to start doing something, I think that they, they really do benefit. So where I can help you is I'm the cheerleader. Right. So you're you're putting them on right. the therapy. You need them to exercise. You say, go and see Matt. And they come in the office. And I'm like, what are we going to do to get you out there? Well, I don't know what to do, Matt. We set up physical therapy. I mean, we can do that. They can help them set up an exercise regimen. There's a lot of things that we can do. So it's, this where communication just helps so much. Yeah, you know, there's really ample evidence that people that that have advanced cancer, and not just prostate cancer, that um, exercise, stay in shape, diet, not a crazy diet. I mean, we all see people come in and say they're, they're taking vitamin E and selenium and drinking soy and, and pomegranate juice and everything else like that. I mean, you know, what's heart healthy is usually prostate cancer healthy. You don't have to go overboard. Uh, so, you know, those are things that we need to obviously work on. But the exercise is really something, I think, and staying in shape. And the guys that I have on ADT, I've got a number of them that are in great shape. And they don't have any, they're, they're tolerating quite well. And these are the people that are out there that continue to lift weights. Um, they continue to exercise. They watch your diet. I, I, you know, I just learned something from you. I didn't, I didn't realize there was a thousand calories more that with ADT that you lost because of that. 